Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 840. If you want to download this workbook 836 to 847, click on the link below the video. In this video here, we have a column of numbers, and we need to figure out the frequency and total, or the count and the total, given certain categories. Now, each one of these categories has a lower and an upper. So in essence, when we count, or we add, or total, we're going to be counting and adding with two criteria, right? Here's how it works. We'll start with this category right here. When I'm counting, I have to ask two questions of each number in this category. So for this first one, I have to say, is that number greater than or equal to this lower number? And is that number less than the upper limit? When I come down here, I'm going to have to do the same thing. Every number in the, the column here is going to get two questions. So this, I'm going to say to this number, is this number greater than or equal to 25? And is this number less than 50? Now notice I'm saying less than the upper limit. And the reason why is we have a 25 here and a 25 here. So you can't say equal in both cases. So I'm going to choose to use the equal sign for all of the lowers. I'm going to say all these numbers, are they, whenever I get to the category, is the lower, is this number, greater than or equal to the lower, but the upper all you just say less than, right? Anytime we get a true. So for right on this number right here, when I ask the question, is that number greater than or equal to zero? True. And is that number less than or equal less than 25? True. When I get two trues, it gets counted in that category. Now we're going to use count ifs function and the sum ifs functions. We use these formulas first, and then we'll do a pivot table. All right, count if. Now there's a count if. It's great because it says count, which means I'm counting an if. That means there's some condition. That's an older function. It only counts with one criteria. The ifs with an s is something that was new in 2007. So 2007 to 10, you can use count ifs. And that's what we're going to use. It allows one or more criteria. Now the screen tip is pretty polite. I'm going to say criteria range. So I'm going to click in that top cell and use the keyboard shortcut Control Shift Down Arrow. And then I'm going to hit the F4 key. I need to lock those cell references as I copy this down, meaning the dancing ants need to be locked as I go down to this cell and this cell, etc. All right, criteria range, comma, criteria. Well, the first criteria is greater than or equal to the lower. Now that greater than or equal to is a comparative operator. And you have to put the comparative operator in double quotes, greater than or equal. Now there's no such thing as a greater than or equal to symbol together. So you have to put them one after the other with the equal always coming last. End double quote. That's the comparative operator. Now we need to join that with this number. The join symbol is ampersand shift 7. And then I click on that cell. Now I've joined those two things, and they become the criteria. So that's criteria 1, comma, criteria, criteria 2. I'm going to have to use this very same range and repeat it. Control V, I pasted it there. All right, comma, and then the criteria 2, comparative operator less than, in double quotes, ampersand. That's Shift 7, and then click on the upper limit. Now, both of these numbers are relative cell references. So as I copy the formula down, this whole formula down, the dancing ants will move and appropriately see the new upper limit in that case, or lower limit for the green one. Control Enter, double click and send it down. That little uh, trick there is great. See that little angry rabbit? Double click and send it down. All right, now I'm going to click in the last cell and hit F2. Verify that the blue box is actually locked at the down at the bottom and that the green and purple one moved as relative cell references. Perfect. Now I'm actually going to cheat and copy this. Because guess what? I have to use that range three times now in the sum ifs function. All right, so the sum if is one criteria that worked. That works on all versions of Excel. Sum ifs is a new function. This works in 2007 and 10. The screen tip is very polite. It says, hey, give me the sum range. Well, the all of the ranges are same because we, we only have one column of numbers here. So I'm going to Control V. The criteria range, 
I have to repeat it. The criteria one, I'm going to use a comma to get to the next uh, argument. Same thing, we have two criteria. The first one I'm going to uh, say greater than or equal to, in double quotes, join it with the lower limit. Comma and the criteria range two, I'm going to control V, comma, and then our last, our second criteria, in double quotes, less than, ampersand, the upper limit. Close parentheses, control enter, double click and send it down. Click on the last one and verify. Looks good to me. All right, so these are formulas, and the great thing about formulas is if you change the number. So if I change this to 1 right here, right, that better change to 8. And sure enough, it does. Control Z. And I didn't set, set this up, but if you were going to change these, right, this was actually uh, uh, 95, right? Then everything changes. So the idea of formulas is that they instantly update no matter what you change. Pivot tables are, I'll say pivot tables now, pivot tables can create a similar table, maybe not quite as hard as formulas, but it doesn't update quite as easily. It's actually quite easy, but just not as automatic as formulas. All right, pivot tables. Data set has to have a field name at the top, um, the numbers in rows, and you got to have spaces all the way around the data set. If this were sitting in column B and I invoked the pivot table, it would think that this was part of the table. So spaces all around. Click in a single cell in your data set. Insert pivot table. You can also, I'm going to click Escape, use the keyboard shortcut Alt N V T. Alt N V T. I'm going to put this on this sheet just so we can compare and contrast. I'm going to click right there. Click OK. Now the pivot table, this is our field list. We have row labels and values. Notice this is, these are in rows. So I'm going to drag the sales down to row. Immediately all it does is list the values. I'm going to right click one of the numbers in the row labels. Right click and group. I'm going to say starting at 0. Ending at 100. Increment 25 and then click OK. Oh, just like that. Now, something odd about pivot tables in, set in 2007 to 10, they show row labels. I really like this to say sales. So I'm immediately going to go up to the pivot table context sensitive ribbons and go to design. Go to row layout and show in tabular. Oh, that's much better. Now, what do I have to do? I need frequency and to total, just like I have up there with my formulas. I'm going to drag the sales down to the values area down here. I'm going to drag it once and twice. And then close this field list. Count of sales, that's perfect. If I wanted to change this to frequency, I could just click and type Enter. This one here, I'm going to have to not only change the label, but the function. Right click, value field settings. Ah, the functions, I'm going to click sum. I'm going to get rid of that too. So I can change the label, the function. I'm also going to change the number formatting to something like currency. Click OK. Click OK. And so there we have it. Uh, two methods for creating frequency and total given a single column of numbers. All right, we'll see you next trick.